report or oppose it before they get an opportunity to read the report on the Committee on Legal Justice. Mr. Speaker, I've attempted to understand the gist of this bill, and to me it sounds like one of those bills which are imposed to this country by the World Bank. One of the biggest challenges that I have in absorbing the content of this bill is because most of it, Mr. Speaker, is utopian. If you ask me, what is the object of this bill? It clearly says it's to man the management of conflict of interest in discharging of official duties. The first question that, Mr. Speaker, I ask is that what are official duties? It also talks about administration. Mr. Speaker, if you look at this bill, this bill repeals sections of other existing legislations, which I dare say play a critical rule, role in governance in this country. Bills that, Mr. Speaker, were drafted after the promulgation of the Constitution. Some of the bills the consequential amendments which are listed in the third schedule, Mr. Speaker, includes repeals of sections of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, number three of 2003. Mr. Speaker, it also talks about repeal amendment of section one of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission Act, number 22 of 2011. And, and then the other sections of another legislation that he repeals is the Leadership and Integrity Act, number 19 of 2012. If you look at section 2, is deleted. Section 6.3 is deleted. Section 6.4 is deleted. Section 13.1a is deleted and substituted thereof with a new paragraph. Section 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 23, 26, 27, 28 are all deleted. Section 52 is also deleted. And if you read further, Mr. Speaker, you will understand that this is really not a bill that has been thought out clearly and legislators given an opportunity to really understand what this bill hopes to achieve. Mr. Speaker, I've looked at... Um, what this bill is really trying to deal with. And I can narrow it down to about four issues. Issue number one is the issue of disclosures, which is required for every public officer. You know, the same, same forms that we fill, although I've looked at the bill, and it extends a little bit further because it requires now feedback from the reporting agencies. It also talks about uh, the recusal in the event that there is a conflict of interest. You have to recuse yourself. But even that in itself, Mr. Speaker, has not been fully thought out because there are certain sectors of this public office entity that have been left out. It tries to focus on issues of transparency, Mr. Speaker. It is actually trying to calculate a culture of transparency. Mr. Speaker, the next thing that this bill talks about is the issue of penalties, like what happens. I'm really trying to demystify the gist of the entire bill because it talks about certain penalties and whereas there are penalties that have not been spelled out, it says if you're a person, you will be charged 4 million shillings and the other will be charged 10 million shillings if it's an entity. 4 million shillings with 10 years imprisonment. Mr. Speaker, we have a tendency in this house of really fast-tracking National Assembly legislations. When they are brought, whew, we put them through the conveyor belt so fast and most of us don't even understand them. While our own bills originated from this house. They are collecting dust at the National Assembly. In fact, if you read this bill, Mr. Speaker, you'll get to a point where the National Assembly is given so much powers as a reporting agency. 
I'll try and look at certain provisions of this bill, which I think the drafters of this bill have thought about, but not really. But they need to expand it. And I really do hope that this time around, distinguished senators can get an opportunity to really internalize this bill. We don't want to be counted as those people who go in and clap for a bill and they don't even know what it is about. They haven't read. So that tomorrow, when it is affecting us, we start complaining. Mr. Speaker, when you are told that when you're, in a, when you're a public figure or a state officer, that you've got to disclose all your money that you earn, the money that your wife earns, the money that your children earn, the money, I mean, seriously, what sort of draconian laws are these, Mr. Speaker? You'll find families that the husband and the wife, they don't talk to each other. They just live in an arrangement. They collect, they make their own money. But now, if you are a state officer, you are now asked, Mr. Speaker, imagine this, that that wife of yours that you don't talk to, that child of yours that you don't talk to, who has her life or his life, for you as a state officer, you must disclose how much money they, they earn. You must disclose all their income. I mean, seriously? Just because we want to please the World Bank, we just really come up with legislation that don't help us? I long for the time, Mr. Speaker, when we as a country can be able to develop our legislation, taking into consideration our culture, how people struggle to be there. You know, if you, if you read the people who are tasked with the administration of this conflict of interest legislation, number five, he said the act shall be administered by reporting authorities, and I'll define who those reporting authorities are, and the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Mr. Speaker, why should we not just look at the ESCC Act, go through it together, see what we can change, because no law is static. Things change. We're very good as a country, Mr. Speaker, in drafting legislation. We are very good. We pass them, but they are only good on paper. There's one section which is very utopian in its nature. It says, still on the number six, the function of the commission under this act shall be 6B, develop an effective system of reporting violations of this act. So the ESCC goes out and develop a reporting mechanism. And then below in number seven, it says the commission shall in performance of its function under this act have the powers to, number one, conduct investigation on its own initiative or on a complaint made by a member of the public. I wish it went further and say that what are the requirements, once you complain, how are you sort of like putting the no on the entire investigating mechanism? When is it reported back to you? Because you made a complaint. You are a consumer of this bill. You've complained to the commission. How does the commission write back to you? We need, because I know this is going to pass, we need to be able to expand that section and amend that section, Mr. Speaker. There's a provision which I think is very dangerous, and all of us must really pay attention to it. Still, number seven, it says, delegate to another person or body by notice in the Gazette any of its powers or functions under this act in respect to classes of public officers specified by the commission and that persons of the body shall be deemed to be responsible for the administration and management of conflict of interest. Mr. Speaker, that's a very, very dangerous clause. We're already seeing what is panning out there. If you read Article 156 of the Constitution of Kenya, where it gives the powers to protect public interest to the Attorney General, 
And then the same, when you go to the Attorney General's Act, you will see that he is now given the powers to delegate. And in most cases, he will delegate to the Solicitor General. Mr. Speaker, a very mischievous government will then bypass the Attorney General and goes to the Solicitor General because the Act gives that person the power to delegate. Who is this person who the Commission shall delegate their powers to? If we've set up a Commission which is set up under an Act of Parliament, why then not either amend that Act of Parliament or do away? Mr. Speaker, I would propose that this very dangerous clause should be deleted so that the independence of a body and everybody out there will not be confused on the powers of that commission. Allow that commission to perform its function, but not restrictively, but not now create room for it to be abused by setting up another agency that is delegated powers. Because, hypothetically, Mr. Speaker, if the powers that be are not happy with the independence of the commission, then they will just go to the other person who is delegated. It creates room for corruption, which is what we are trying to deal with here, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you read 7, the commission shall, in performance of its function under this act, have the powers to, D says, cooperate and collaborate with any public entity or agencies, any foreign government, an international or, or regional organization in the management of conflict of interest and, I proceed, enforcement of this act. Mr. Speaker, what is it that we do in this house? We've got two, and hopefully soon we'll get a third, uh, a third committee on oversight. We've got the public accounts committee, We've got the PIC committee, Public Investments uh, Accounts Committee. I would have hoped that now that you're trying to really deal with the issue of corruption, incorporate the aspect of these two committees to be able to work there. So leaving out the Senate, yet sometimes we have these ESCC people there sitting with us in our, in our committees. Why then not say in this aspect that even the Senate, so that you can deal with the corruption in the counties, Mr. Speaker. You know, and uh, later on, I hope we'll have time, I don't know if we'll have time, that I'll be moving my motion on pending of bills. But if you really want to deal with the matter decisively, then you've got to create room for this oversight house to be able to work directly with the commission to punish these governors, to punish these people who are stealing all this money that belongs to the public. In my view, Mr. Speaker, I hold the view that this is not an act that has been thought out clearly. It is an act, it is a bill which is being rushed to be able to <laughs> please other agencies like the World Bank. Mr. Speaker, if you read section 13, which I, I don't know whether it's the one that you're saying we're going to amend, it says that a public officer shall not directly or indirectly use or allow any person under the office authority to use any information that is obtained in the course of performing official duties and is not available to the public to improperly further or seek a further. You had actually, I was looking at it and I said, they should limit it to strictly private and personal interest. You know, when I, when I was born, uh, Mr. Speaker, oh. Mr. Speaker, you can give me some additional time, because this is something that I really, really believe that we need to be very diligent. We need to take our time. So what I was saying is that on that section 13, it is imperative that it is limited to an individual. You know, my brother has got no business dealing with my issues. Number 19, Mr. Speaker, a public officer shall not be a party to or beneficial of a contract for the supply of good works of services 
with his or her reporting entity. Mr. Speaker, I think it is wrong to deny Kenyans an opportunity to be able to perform certain functions. If, Mr. Speaker, hypothetically, Mr. Speaker, you own a company that trades with the Senate, and that company has been trading with the Senate, it doesn't say that Wakili Sigei, Senator of Bomet, is trading with that. Mr. Speaker, I just, be, I just want us to really put this thing into perspective. It should only be limited to an individual. If it is coming under your name, by all means, I agree you shouldn't do, you shouldn't benefit. But if it is your company, so this issue of indirectly, Mr. Speaker, that ought to be removed. And I, I can dare say, Mr. Speaker, if you go to these developed countries, you will not find such draconian laws. They are so quick to impose them on us, but they don't have them. Mr. Speaker, I'm a firm believer that Section 27 ought to be deleted completely in its entirety. I know the committee was probably recommending for it to be amended, but in my own reading of this bill, where it says, a former public officer shall not, and I'll read A, B, C, and D briefly, act for or on behalf of any person in connection with any specific proceeding, transaction, negotiated, negotiation, or case in which the state is a party and with respect to which the former public officer had acted for or provided advice to the state. Mr. Speaker, the word former means I no longer benefit from it. In fact, if we are clever enough, Mr. Speaker, former staff have got historical memory. In fact, they will better advise someone because they can easily save the public money. In other jurisdictions, Mr. Speaker, former officers set up offices to offer consultancy services. In the United States, Mr. Speaker, former IRS officers who are working with the Internal Revenue Service set up consultancy services and they will tell you, I was a former officer of the Internal Revenue Service. They help you be able to save your time. They help you negotiate better. Mr. Speaker, this Section 27, I believe, has to be deleted. Section 28, Mr. Speaker, is such other provision that I believe ought to be deleted, where it says a former public official shall not, during the period of two years. Why are you incarcerating me? Why are you making it difficult for me to make a life? Suppose that is the only training that I've had. So for two years, I'll stay hungry just because I happen to have been working in that department. Mr. Speaker, this is draconian and it has to be removed. Mr. Speaker, because of time, I will set other provisions which I think are very problematic. Section 31. Every public officer shall submit to the responsible commission a declaration of his or her income, assets, and liability, and the income, assets, and liability of his or her spouse and dependent children. That is ridiculous. Dependent children. Yes, they depend on me. But the fact that they are dependent means they don't own, they don't own anything. And if I'm paying for them their college, and maybe they go to college and get a job as a waiter. Now I have to follow my child and say, I need to know how much money you are making as a waiter because there's this ridiculous draconian law that we passed that requires me as a public officer to declare how much you are being paid as a waiter. That is ridiculous. Mr. Speaker, I want to request two more minutes I, I conclude this matter. Mr. Speaker, if you look at 31A, where... You have two more minutes. Two more minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Where the National Assembly is given so much powers. You know, it says that the committee of the National Assembly, responsible for the ethics of members, is responsible commission for the cabinet, members of the National Assembly, the DPP, the secretary to the cabinet. Mr. Speaker, I propose that that section be amended to state as parliament, which is both houses of parliament. 
it is important and I'm happy that uh, we have our powers and privileges committees that deals with the ethics of our committees. But I think even in terms of the National Assembly, it ought to be reduced to that on its own. Mr. Speaker, is another very dangerous provision, which is 32.3. A public officer shall within 30 days after ceasing to be a public officer submit a final declaration relating to his financial affairs as of the date he ceased to be a public officer. Mr. Speaker, we have members of parliament who spend a lot of money and running for re-election. At the time when they were running, they had so much money. But they lose, unfortunately. So you want to embarrass that person that after 30 days, he comes in and tells you, I'm now bankrupt? Come on, where is level of uh, respect and privacy to these things? You already, you know he's no longer in, in office. I still also believe that Section 34, Mr. Speaker, has also got to be repealed. I, will, I invite uh, members of uh, the Senate to go read through that. The other one which, Mr. Speaker, is very dangerous is 39. If you read 39.2a, Mr. Speaker, it says, a reporting authority and the commission shall not conduct concurrent investigation over the same complaint. Mr. Speaker, we are two distinct houses. The reason take it to public participation, just like the way the National Assembly does, is because we are two independent institutions that gives different opinions. That means now, if the Energy Committee of the National Assembly is seized of a matter of high you know, bills, electric bill, it means that this, the, the, the Senate Energy Committee will not be investigating that matter. That is an issue that needs to be taken off. Mr. Speaker, I really wish we had so much time, but I want to end by saying the following. Yes, we may want to appear as if we are compliant to the terms of what I call modern structural adjustment policies. But I think we have to look at our situation. We need to look at our situation. Mr. Speaker.